So this is Enzo, so she's one of the kestrels that we have at our centre. She's actually quite an old lady, uh, almost 12 years old actually, considering that kestrels in the wild normally only live a couple of years. It's a very good age for her. Uh, now she's quite a cheeky character, sometimes she flies really well, other times she's a bit of a perch potato and makes me do all the work. So we'll see what she does today. So this is Levi. He's in his 20s and he's a Chilean Blue Eagle. So he's one of the few birds that we've got with us today. We're hoping to fly him a little bit later on. And uh, he's definitely the largest one that we've got today compared to some of the other Dinky Dots. But he only weighs three and a half pounds. He's still lovely and light. <laughs> hey guys, my name's Carly. I come from Herring's Green Activity Farm. That's where all of our birds uh, go home to at the end of each day where we bring them in I say from to do these little demonstrations for you guys now as I say I'm not entirely sure how my birds are going to respond with that still going ahead um, but we can just have them do their absolute best guys if at any point the birds decide that they do not want to do any flying unfortunately you know why all right guys but yeah this beautiful boy this is Foden now Foden is one of the Harris Hawks that we have at our Bird of Prey Centre. He is a very, very sweet boy and yeah, hang on, <laughs> he's a very regular boy. He does lots of outside demonstrations so he is a bird that as they would normally have been in this show and flying completely loose for you guys but yeah, we'll make it work buddy. Now Foden being a Harris Hawk, down here, down here, I want you down there, there we go. To say being a Harris Hawk, he is a species that I'm sure many of you guys will have seen in many a zoo or bird of prey centre all across the UK. They tend to be a bird that anyone and everyone will love to work because they are just a really nice natured, really, really friendly bird. So these guys, one of their real nice things about them is not just their nature, but the fact that they in the wild work, hunt and fly together in a family group. So they work together in the wild to be able to take down larger prey items than what the birds could perhaps do if they were all on their lonesome. So by working together guys, a group of Harris Hawks is more than capable of taking down something up to the size, you've got to let go, up to the size of a deer. Now that always blows people's minds, but I have seen it with my own eyes, a group of our Hawks bringing down a month jack. That was around about five years ago now. And Foden was not one of those hawks. Um, Foden does, although you know they are supposed to be a gregarious bird, he does prefer his own company rather than working with any of our other Harris hawks. That's absolutely fine. I say every bird has its own character, personality and whatnot. And we just have to work alongside that character and personality that the individual birds all have. But yeah, Foden's favorite thing to do is have all the food to himself. He loves all of the treats and you'll see sometimes we hand feed, sometimes we feed out of the glove. Um, but Foden, he's absolutely a gentle giant, guys. He only weighs one and a half pounds, but he's gentle both with his feet and with his beak as well. Speaking of his beak, I don't know if anybody has noticed with Foden, but you might see, guys, I'll try and spin him around. He has actually got a wonky beak. All right, not judging me, I think you're beautiful. But he does have a little wonky beak, guys. Now, he hatched out with this particular beak shape. I'll try and show you guys over here in just a moment. And it doesn't affect him at all. I say it just means he doesn't sit straight. That's all. But yeah, so that does sometimes cause him issues with eating. So we do actually regularly trim that beak. Um, it's called coping. And this trimming of the beak is very similar to trimming your fingernails. It's actually made out of the exact same material. Now all birds of prey have this hooked sharp beak that can naturally wear down with time as the bird is eating. But because his beak is ever so slightly wonky, it doesn't wear down. I dropped a bit, didn't I? It doesn't wear down as much as it would normally do. But of course, if this little guy was out in the wild, unfortunately he would not have survived, guys. Usually if there is an issue with a bird, the parents actually will stop rearing that particular baby. So they want to make sure that they are rearing only the biggest, fittest and healthiest chicks. So yeah, if he was in the wild guys, he wouldn't have made it. 
Robert here with us. He's got a dead easy life. All he's got to do is hang out with people, get lots of snacks, and we'll just be polite. It's all right, isn't it? It's nice and easy. But yeah, guys, that was the beautiful Foden. So we're going to get him nice and safely away. I think they're done. Please be done. Please be done. I really hope they're done, guys, because if they do finish, we can fly birds offline. Now, as I say, with Foden, guys, for those that um, weren't here straight away, Foden is normally flown free, guys, but with that activity over there, they contain pyrotechnics. I think they've shut up. Have they shut up? Are they just doing microphone practice? Just decide what you're doing so I can decide what I'm doing. Well, they're just giving sweets to the kids at the moment. They're what? So they're just giving sweets? Amazing. That, if that involves fire, then I will go and hurt them. All right. Now, would you guys like to see a bird hopefully flown off a line? Yeah, flown free. Fantastic. As I say, guys, I don't want any of my birds barbecued, but their activity goes on for about six hours longer um, than it really should. But there you go. Anyway, guys, we're moving on now to a little old lady for you. Now, that always confuses people because she's very, very small. But, guys, this little lady's actually 11 years old. Now, birds of prey are fully grown at about 8 to 10 weeks. Right, so they grow really, really fast. And that just allows them to, you know, survive in the wild. If they don't grow quickly enough, then they're just not going to make it. But this gorgeous girl, she's called Enzo, and she is a common kestrel. She is a bit of a diva. Sometimes she flies really well. Other times she's a little lazy, and she's basically got me well trained. Um, she knows at some point I will come on over to her and just give her a nice, delicious little treat. So, you know, so she'll get little snacks, just like all of our other birds do when we fly them. Some of hers are hand-fed, but the majority of hers she gets fed from the fist. But do bear with her because she's got to enjoy each morsel before she'll do another flight. All right. Now, you will notice, guys, it's okay. You're okay. You will notice that when she is eating, she'll often use her little foot, almost like you guys would use a hand. They've got incredibly dexterous feet, members of the falcon family. And it actually means that falcons, guys, believe it or not, are actually quite closely related to parrots. You wouldn't believe that, would you? But yeah, they're one of their close relatives, say, aside from the bird of ray world. You think about how a parrot uses its feet, very, very similar to how a falcon uses its feet. Now, you will notice I'll intermittently use the word falcon and the word kestrel. Guys, to be really exact, she is the common or European kestrel, so this is our lovely little native species. But there are 14 types of kestrel in the world, all right? And those 14 kestrels are all part of the falcon family. In this country, we also have the peregrine, the hobby, and the merlin. So we have a nice selection of different native falcon species. These guys are not the biggest, all right? The biggest being the peregrine, which is just over double the size of Enzo just here. The smallest one we get though, the merlin, those guys are actually about half the size of her. There you go, you remember to use your little feet. I know, arthritis gets us all at some point, doesn't it, Curly? You do have to bear with her, guys. I don't know if you saw, she was a little slow to respond there because her foot actually got stuck. Sometimes it takes her a moment to actually get the joints working in her feet nowadays, like this, to say she's not able to actually let go of me. You're okay, I know, it's okay. We all get old at some point, girl. Now, 11, I say, I know it doesn't sound old to us, but guys, kestrels in the wild usually live until their second birthday. That's it. They don't normally live for anywhere near as long as 11 years. The oldest kestrel under human care, guys, did live nearly into its 20s. So we are really, really hoping that although she is an old girl, she's still got life in those little bones just yet. And I say, hopefully she'll carry on for many years to come. But yeah, guys, I'm going to ask her for one more flight. This is her last tidbit, so she has done really, really well. But I say it is all up to her because she's an old bird. We don't push her um, too hard anymore. We just let her do her thing at her own pace. But every now and then, she's a cheeky little lady. She'll actually go back into my van herself. Um, she'll be like, no, I'm, I've had enough now. Please put me away. But you can do one more. You can do one more. You can do it. What a good girl. Thank you very much. Now, guys, I say I'll bring her around nice and close so you guys can have an extra, extra close look. Um, if there is a dog right up to the rope, I will be avoiding that area, guys, just so you are aware. I'm not being rude. 
but yeah just so you can have a really really lovely good look at her now as i bring her around guys have a look at her beautiful patterns and her beautiful markings what you guys will see is that she has a really lovely stripy tail and guys it's actually only the female kestrels that have got this lovely stripy tail the males have a solid grey tail with only one black bar right at the very end and the males have also got a completely solid grey head as well the coloration that you guys see on enzo here is actually for camouflage so when the ladies are sitting on the nest and looking after the babies they want to blend in as best as they possibly can so the more kind of blending and color coloration she's got the more likely she is to be able to survive herself as well as keep an eye on her chicks the males don't need to be all camouflaged though they are just bringing food to the females they're not really incubating those eggs so the males don't really need to blend in quite as much as this gorgeous little girl now i know she looks all sweet and innocent guys and i get so many people asking if they can touch and stroke her sure you just won't have your fingers after it all right her beak is actually designed to break bone guys all right members of the falcon family have got very very strong crushing beaks because that is how they quickly dispatch their prey items so once they have caught their dinner a swift bite from the beak to the back of the mouse rat vole shrew whatever prey item they've gone for quick bite to the back of these heads and game over super super cool little birds guys but yeah, that was the lovely Enzo. So lovely little old lady. I think she did a fantastic job. Do you guys have it in you for one more bird? One more bird? Yeah? All right. Let me just get this little lady in. Now, guys, the um, final bird, she tends to be, I would say, the most popular, if not one of the most popular um, birds that we actually have at our centre. Certainly one of the most popular groups. I'm just going to shut this for her. Um, if I don't shut the door, then she just goes straight back in and that's it. Uh, you don't actually get her doing anything. Um, but guys, this is the beautiful barn owl. All right now, barn owls, beautiful, beautiful little birds. And of course, another gorgeous native species. She's very clingy, this one. All right. Now this is Midge. And Midge is actually extra, extra clingy, guys, because I actually hand reared her. So I've been working with this bird ever since she was only one day old. Now she was hand reared because, well, your mum's not very nice, is she? No. Um, to be fair to her mum, she was a first time parent at the time and she actually kicked Midge and her brother out of the nest. Now sometimes that happens with an inexperienced parent. They don't really know what they're doing. They don't really know how to rear the babies. So they just go, what is this? And they just automatically just get rid of them. So whenever that happens, when I say the birds are born and bred at our centre, we're always happy to step in to give a bird a bit of a chance at life. It does mean that I say she does genuinely think that I am her mum. So sometimes you'll see her out on her perch a little bit later on. We'll have all the birds um, out after they um, say have done their little bit of flying. And you will often see her the second I move. She's like, where are you going, mum? She's just a very nosy, I say, incredibly curious bird. Unfortunately though guys, beautiful as barn owls are, owls are not intelligent. Okay, I'm very sorry to have to tell you guys this, but yeah, owls are thick as two short planks. Case in point, you've just thrown your food on the floor. Try again. There you go. So the whole wise old owl thing guys, that myth has come from the goddess Athena. Among many things, she was the goddess of wisdom and was always pictured with an owl as her sacred totem animal as I say the national symbol so yeah, yeah they're not wise or clever but they are still beautiful and they do fly completely and utterly silently now the silent flight being the main way that these guys survive in the wild so that's how they are hunting their favored prey items so sneak attacking and the silent flight on the owls is created by special structures to the leading and trailing edges of their wing feathers so yes yeah, super super cool little birds but yeah, there are so many different myths about owls, guys. And one of the ones I've heard quite a lot, actually, um, from people is people asking us why our owls don't go to its to woo. It's because we've not got a tawny owl with us, guys. There are 250 different species of owl on planet Earth. And it is only the tawny owl that can actually go to wit to woo. To be really, really exact, guys, with the tawny owl, the female tawny owl twigs, and the male tawny owl to woos. 
So it is a little duet, which I just think is really, really adorable. Now, now something that I hear a lot, particularly from parents, actually, people talking to their kiddos, a lot of people say to their kids, look, the owl can turn its head all the way around. Now, guys, if an owl turned its head 360 degrees, it would only do it once, because then its head would come off. Okay, so no animal can just keep spinning and spinning and spinning the head. However, guys, owls, as well as many birds, actually, are able to turn their heads through 270 degrees. So three quarters of the way around, and I still think that's pretty darn cool. So incredible, incredible flexibility. But they need to do that, guys, because they actually cannot move their eyes. So the only way that these guys can actually look around is by turning and moving their heads. Now, speaking of their eyes, guys, you'll see that Midge here, are you going? You'll see she's got these lovely dark eyes. And it's that eye coloration, guys, that we use to tell that she would be an owl that would normally hunt at night time. Now, sometimes people are like, what do you mean? All owls hunt at night, don't they? Uh, no, 30% of them, guys. All right, not all of them in the slightest. And it's only the owls with a dark eye colour like this. Owls with the kind of yellowy toned eyes, like the little owl that we also have with us today, those guys would be hunting during the daytime. And owls like, for example, the Eurasian eagle owl with the kind of orangey toned eyes, those guys would be hunting at dawn and at dusk. So yeah, big myth that owls are all nocturnal. Now yeah guys, I'm going to bring her along really nice and close as well, so once again, you guys can have a lovely up close look at her. She's an absolutely stunning little bird. And as I bring her along guys, you'll see she has a spotty belly. It's the spotty belly that we use to tell that she's a little girl. The boy barn owls don't have the spots. And actually if you have a look at the wings and the tail, the boy barn owls don't have the stripes there that the girls have as well. You'll notice I don't stop really with Midge. She's a very wiggly lady and if I stop, she will get wiggly herself. So I have to kind of keep moving with her guys, I'm afraid, just to make sure that she stays really, really nice and happy. Um, but guys, I think all of our birds have done a little fantastic job for this morning's demonstration. And I do hope you have enjoyed our little first demonstration, guys. We are hoping to be doing a completely different show for you guys at half past one. If you guys would like to come and see some of our other birds flying, feel free to come back then. Um, we're going to at least try our best to do it completely different. Sometimes the birds have other ideas. You might see Midge again. Who knows? Um, but guys, if you would like to just hang about and have a little look at the other birds I've got, give me a moment just to pop some bits away and get my perches back out and all of the birds will be out for you guys to nose at and I'll be available to answer any of your questions. Aside from that, guys, thank you for hanging out with me and the birds this afternoon and enjoy the rest of your day.